I was going to say a few words, but I think uh, a lot has been said. But more importantly, we are very honored and privileged that we have a very, very special guest amongst us. We're very lucky. We have a renowned genocide scholar amongst us. And I will be calling on another good friend, another architect of today's triumph for the Armenian nation, the chairperson of ANC Western Region, but that doesn't tell you what she does. It's the person who single-handedly, I think, galvanized, organized, covered all errors, mistakes, gaps, quietly, efficiently, the way she always does. The reason why we have the Garcettis and the Schiffs and all other public officials join us is the, the, the organization that she leads. Attorney, friend, great person, Nora Hovsepian. my pleasure to introduce Dr. Jermaine McAlpin tonight. Uh, he just flew in from Jamaica and just came straight from the airport. He will be the keynote speaker at the AGCC's event, the Armenian Genocide Centennial Committee's joint event with the city of Glendale on Sunday at the Alex Theater. That's why he's here. Uh, Dr. McAlpin is a good friend and strong advocate for the Armenian community and for our cause. He is a political scientist. He earned his PhD, master's and PhD at Brown University. And he specializes in transitional justice. Dr. McAlpin is one of the authors of the recently released Reparations Study Group Report, um, which takes us really to the next level in our cause in formulating a framework by which we can uh, pursue reparations and restitution for the consequences of the Armenian Genocide. So uh, I'd like to ask him to come up for a few minutes and tell us a little bit about himself and about his research. Good evening, everyone. Um, it is my pleasure to be here. I want to say thanks first of all to Dr. Hosepian and the ARF for sponsoring the study report. Uh, you may be wondering what is a Jamaican doing studying the Armenian Genocide? <laughs> so I know you are wondering. My first, my first mention of anything pertaining to Armenia is while as an elementary student in Jamaica in 1986 I was reading one of my sister's history book and they spoke of Nagorno-Karabakh and I started reading about Armenia 30 years later I am approached by a colleague Henry Therio, Dr. Henry Therio and he asks me to assist with the Armenian Genocide Study Report and um, I was thrilled at the prospects because 30 years earlier I had read of the Armenian Genocide. So as far back as then, um, destiny had it that I would be associated with the cause of justice. In the US in the 1960s, they had a slogan, um, blacks had a slogan, and Gary made mention of it. It said, no justice, no peace. And I think where we are and where I stand personally is that we can't talk about anything beyond reparations. That is, we can't talk about peace, we can't talk about reconciliation, we first have to start at the beginning, and the beginning is reparations. What I, what I understand reparations to mean is not just the conduct of money. It is about restoring the dignity and humanity of Armenians. When you suffer from a genocide, your entire identity begins to coalesce around the tragedy. 
And so much of the Armenian identity is shaped by the genocide and the tragedy of genocide. To remove the Armenian community from that feeling of, as genocide scholars call, second classness, it requires a reparation and an act of reparation. The genocide study report, you may have read it, and if you haven't, please read it. It's comprehensive, it's extensive, uh, it's philosophical, but it's also practical. It gives us a language that we can all understand reparations. It's not just giving money. And reparations, sometimes people treat reparations as if it's um, hush money. It's something to keep the victims silent. Reparation is justice. It is not something Armenians are begging for. It is that a genocide occurred and reparations are required. It is not something we are soliciting just because we want to punish people for the past. It is about responsibility, which is why the title of the report is called Resolution with Justice. You can't talk about reconciliation unless you talk about reparations. And the other thing I want to, to make mention of are some of the similarities with all genocides that I've studied. All genocides start the same way. They start with a knock. They start with a rounding up of peoples and they all end in denial. Because every time one is perpetuated, those who perpetrate it say, I did nothing. The erasure of history is important because those who are in power tend to want to erase those who didn't have the power from the face of history. I believe reparations are a critical way of rescuing the forgetfulness of the Armenian Genocide. And what I find very encouraging is that any group that is going to have a successful claim to reparation has to build solidarity across the group which is why I'm here. Uh, when I was asked to serve on the committee, I jumped at it first time. I study justice generally, and I deal with reparations specifically. When Professor Theriot asked me to be a part of it, the first thing I said is that there are glaring similarities between reparations for slavery and the Armenian Genocide. One group, a group in power, continues to deny those who are not in power the justice of their cause. George Santanaya talking about war in 1921, Spanish philosopher, he said, if we do not learn from history, we will be fated to repeat it. And every time the world says, never again, we have another genocide. Why? Because we have not learned about how to conduct the affairs of human life. Every time we say, never again, another genocide occurs. And so I think the Armenian Genocide holds for us a very critical significance because not if, but when it is resolved in terms of reparations, I think it will set a precedence against uh, the conduct of genocides. I think of genocides as nation-building projects, very extreme nation-building projects. When you are building a nation, you build it in the mind and in the understanding of a very few persons. And so that is what Turkey did. It was building a nation, but it didn't have a collaborative uh, understanding of nation, nation building. And so you have to categorize people before you begin to destroy them. And when you destroy, you're not only destroying the immediate sufferers of genocide, you are attempting to wipe their memory from history. And so we understand justice in the cause of reparations as a way of placing and replacing Armenians back in history. So I won't take up much more of your, your time excepting to say I really appreciate it. It is an honor being here. Um, this is my 10th time speaking about the Armenian Genocide and I, I am always captivated at how interested you are to hear a non-Armenian talk about the Genocide. But it does something to me as well because it says injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere. And so we don't have to look the same way, we don't have to belong to the same group, 
we belong to one race, which is the human race. And so the cause of the Armenians cannot just be a cause for the Armenians. It has to be the cause of everyone who is concerned with justice. Thank you very much.